Hello everyone, my name is Johnny Shealy and welcome to Velocity Launch Systems. Today I'll be giving you a quick overview of my Eclipse rocket. So the goal of this rocket is to maintain active thrust vector control to allow the rocket to be stabilized without the use of fins. So in order to accomplish this, I have developed a flight computer and a thrust vector control mount. I built a rocket around those and I will be showing you those two pieces of technology, starting with the flight computer. So. The fly computer uses an Arduino Nano to execute um, and use everything uh, everything else on the fly computer. So that's the brains of the fly computer. I have a power dispersal unit for um, allowing me to connect a 9-volt battery. This 9-volt battery is not charged, so it won't do anything other than light it up when I turn it on. You see that? But, um, Oh, she is doing stuff. Cool. Um, but yeah, that's what that does. Uh, that takes up a majority of the flight computer. Um, it's a lot more than I needed, but it works. Uh, blue LED, so I can have visual. Uh, I can visually see the status of the rocket. Uh, BNO 355 uh, inertial measurement unit, which will allow me to under, uh, which will allow the flight computer to understand the orientation of it, and then actuate the servos accordingly. Um, I have an active buzzer for audio, um, so I can, you know, hear the status of the rocket, hear countdowns, etc. Um, I have a bu um, button, push button, that um, when pushed can execute thrust vector control. Um, and I have two servo outputs, um, both for the thrust vector control mount. And I do not have um, a parachute deployment system uh, added on. But I'm thinking about just having another flight computer on the back, which will have the um, the proper technology used for deploying the parachutes whenever I need them. And if you look at the back, I used um, I used soldering wire to connect all the get the focus. I used soldering wire to connect all the um, electrical connections, and then for the buzzer, I used two wires because it was kind of a last minute add on. Um, but I'm glad I added it on because it's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, so it was a little overcomplicated, but it's not like you don't have a bunch of wires everywhere. So I felt like it was, it was kind of worth it. Um, that it's not, it's more contained than if I just use wires instead of, uh, solder connections. So now looking at that thrust vector control mount, um, right now I have it installed in the rocket, but later I'll take it out and I'll show you the mechanics of it. But you can see that it's, um, attached through four, um, screws. And then there are two cutouts within the, the body tube, which allow the servos to actuate because when they move, they actually go outside the rocket. So they need two holes. Um, this one is a lot bigger than it needs to be. Um, but this is just like a test rocket. I have enough materials to build a second rocket, which will be more of a finalized rocket. But this one's just going to be for a static fire test and maybe a launch. I don't know. Um, the the flight computer is missing a couple things that I would like to add on it, so I might just use it for test purposes. I don't know if that flight computer will ever fly, but we'll see in a couple months once I'm ready to uh, once it, once I'm ready to do a flight. So you can see um, the motor can move around like that, uh, and the two servos uh, move accordingly. So you can notice that when I plug this in. I have it hooked up to a computer because currently the 9 volt battery that I have isn't uh, doesn't have enough battery power left to support the two servos. Um, but when I plug it in to my computer, I already have some code that allow it to actuate five degrees in every direction. So this is just a this is a test to make sure that the thrust vector control mount is working and that the two servos are working together. Um, like when the x-axis and the y-axis move, they don't interfere with each other. So that's what this is for. And you can see that it works pretty well. And you can also see that when um, servos move, they can go outside of the rocket. So that's why those holes are there. And uh, yeah, two 9-gram servos. And the wires run through the center of the rocket. And uh, that's basically it for the thrust vector control mount. I will now remove it and I will give you a more in-depth look at it. Alright, so this is the thrust vector control mount outside of the airframe. You can see how it's working. It uses the two servos to actuate uh, one axis 
5 degrees um, back and forth on the X, and then this one does back and forth on the Y axis, 5 degrees. And then you got you have the the brackets where it mounts in to the to the airframe. And um, yeah, so pretty pretty simple. Um, it's fully 3D printed. And uh, yeah, I think I think that. Oh, I should, um, I should also mention it uses uh, screw connections there and there, and then I gotta find a way to hold this thing. And then there, and then there. So that's that's how it's um, all held together. Um, and uh, yeah, okay. So I think that sums up the transmetric control mount. So moving on, I'm gonna show you kind of the rest of the rocket. The, it's a little less exciting, but it's, it's still part of the rocket. So I'm gonna throw this guy to the side. Oh, up next. So here is the avionics section. So what this is, is I put the flight computer inside the avionics, like so, and then I screw in the flight computer to the avionics in eight different spots, four in the top and four in the bottom, and then connected to the bottom of the avionics, I have the airframe, so now it looks like that, and then four connections there, and then at the top of the payload section, Get it. Here we go. And then four connections there for a total of rocket. And then at the top you have the uh, nose cone. So uh, that has some shock cord and a uh, parachute, and it's fully 3D printed. Some masking tape for a better fit. And uh, yeah, it's got a little area right there, a little socket where I can uh, tie in shock cord and then I'll have a spot at the bottom which has two pyro charges the pressurized payload section and then it will pop the nose gun off pull the parachute out and it will uh it will, it will safely land so big thing is being able to recover the rocket which I have not accounted for on the flight computer but I will I will make sure I have that done so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this video I'll keep you guys updated. Um, now that I have a lot of stuff actually done, I will be able to upload a video, I'd say at least every two weeks, um, just because I'm not like, you know, I'm, I'm getting better at this. I'm being able to build things quicker. But the thing is, I just didn't have enough stuff built to the point where I could show you a video. And I still don't, but that allows for uh, future videos. Um, so, uh, that concludes this video. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye.